Knowledge of the relative wind is essential to fully grasp the aerodynamics of helicopter flight. Relative wind is the airflow which moves parallel but against the airfoil. There are two parts to wind passing by a rotor blade, the horizontal part and the vertical part. The horizontal part is caused by the blades turning plus the movement of the helicopter through the air. The vertical part is caused by the air being forced down through the rotor blades. The resultant relative wind is not exactly the same as the relative wind. The difference is that the resultant relative wind is affected by the induced flow. Essentially, induced flow is the air that's going through the rotor system from top to bottom. The induced flow changes the angle of the relative wind, which is referred to as the resultant relative wind. Think of the relative wind as a purely horizontal component. The induced flow in a hover is solely going to be a vertical component. We're going to experience the most induced flow in the hover, and as we push the cyclic forward to get forward airspeed, the induced flow is going to gradually lessen. This, in turn, will lower the degree of the resultant relative wind, effectively making it more horizontal. This is important because the angle of attack is directly affected by the resultant relative wind. Angle of attack is the difference between the chord line and the resultant relative wind. Remember, the higher the angle of attack, the more lift potential we have, up to the critical angle of about 15 degrees on a symmetrical airfoil. Let's take another look at induced flow. Induced flow is a direct byproduct of lift. It's an aerodynamic force that occurs whenever a moving object redirects the air coming at it. The induced flow can be thought of as the downwash the helicopter produces. We have the most induced flow in a hover, and the induced flow will gradually decrease with forward airspeed. Induced flow can be considered a negative component of flight, as it directly reduces angle of attack by changing the angle of the relative wind. Up until this point, you've been familiarized with the basics of angle of attack, which is the angular difference between the chord line and the resultant relative wind. Angle of attack is a direct measurement of the amount of lift an airfoil is able to produce. Remember, angle of attack is represented by coefficient of lift on the lift formula. We can continue to increase the angle of attack up until it reaches the critical angle. The critical angle is a point in which the airflow around the airfoil transitions from a laminar flow into a turbulent flow. Once the air starts to become turbulent, the airfoil will experience a rapid loss of lift. The critical angle is regarded as the point where the airfoil is going to stall. A stall is a condition where an airfoil no longer is producing sufficient lift to keep the aircraft in the air. Even though an airfoil is stalled, it's still producing lift, just not enough. The angle of incidence is also referred to as the pitch angle. It's the angular difference between the horizontal longitudinal axis. The bigger the angle, the bigger the angle of incidence. A change in angle of incidence does not necessarily imply a change in angle of attack, and vice versa. Remember, the angle of attack is the result of the current resultant relative wind, which can be changed by the winds, nearby obstacles, and the pilot's control inputs. In summary, the resultant relative wind is a mostly horizontal component, which is caused by wind, the rotor system, and airspeed. The resultant relative wind is a relative wind with the addition of induced flow. Induced flow can be thought of as a byproduct of lift and directly affects the angle of attack. We want to minimize the induced flow.